Sal Romano was my barber. Well, may you ask, what could a barber possibly have to do with sex education? Stay tuned. Sal Romano owned a small, typical two-chair barbershop on Franklin Avenue near President Street. And Sal gave me the first haircut I got when my family moved back to Washington Avenue when I was four years old. And he gave me just about every haircut that I had thereafter until I left the old neighborhood about 18 or 19 years later. Sal was a good guy. Everybody liked him. Sal became a celebrity for a brief time when his nephew, John Romano, made the pitching staff of the Brooklyn Dodgers. There were more pictures of John Romano in uniform in Sal's barbership, barbershop three than John had major league wins, which was zero. Now, as I said, everybody liked Sal Romano. He was a very good guy, but nobody liked to go for a haircut. Because whether you went for a haircut on Saturday or went after school at three o'clock, the time spent sitting in the barber shop was time lost to our usual recreational activities. And there was one absolute no-no. You could never go for a haircut at one o'clock on Saturdays, because at one o'clock on Saturdays, Do jo uh, Sal put on his radio to listen to the dreaded Metropolitan Opera. Well, one Saturday it was pouring rain and a lot of the boys and a lot of their mothers decided this would be a very good time to go for a haircut. So many, many boys went for their haircuts and the place was mobbed. And unfortunately, on this particular Saturday, Tony, John's assistant, was either on vacation or homesick. So that there we were all sitting in this mob in the barber shop and the clock was ticking toward curtain time in the Metropolitan Opera. And the boys were becoming more and more antsy. And the barber shop was becoming more and more noisy and chaotic. And Sal was sweating and cursing. And then Sal did an amazing thing. He went to the little room in the back of the barber shop where he had his lunch and hung up his coat and he came out of the room with a stack of magazines and he passed out the magazines, one to each boy, including the boy already on the barber chair. And when I looked at my magazine, I saw it was a copy of a magazine called Sunshine and Health. Sunshine and Health was a magazine about nudist colonies. Now, don't worry, I knew all about Sunshine and Health. I really knew everything about it. I had never actually seen a copy, but I knew all about it. And it took only a few seconds of looking at this magazine to learn three great truths about nudist colonies and about Sunshine and Health. The first great truth was this. Far more women than men went to nudist colonies. Almost every picture in the magazine was of a naked woman. The second great truth was this. Everything important that women had below the waist had disappeared. It was white, uh, airbrushed out. There was nothing to see below the waist. But the third great truth was this. Nothing above the waist was whited out. There was plenty to see. Uh, what there was to see above the waist were dozens and dozens of breasts, dozens and dozens of naked female breasts. And all these breasts were attached to naked female bodies. And these female bodies were leaping at the volleyball net or cavorting in the water or just sunbathing on the beach. And pretty soon, the barber shop, which had been so noisy and chaotic, became very, very quiet. All you could hear was the click, click, click of Sal Romano's scissors 
and the heavy breathing of the boys. And pretty soon, nobody wanted to be next, and nobody wanted to go home, because we loved the barbershop, and we loved Sal Romano. And Sal did another amazing thing. Usually when a kid finished his haircut, Sal would take his few coins and shoo him out the store. This time, as each boy finished, he was allowed to resume his seat and continue reading until everyone had finished his haircut. Naturally, I got home very late, and my mother was a world-class warrior, and she said, Herbert, I was so worried about you. Why are you so late? I said, Mom, there was nothing to worry about. The barber shop was mobbed, and Tony, the assistant, was homesick. And besides that, Mom, I really did want to hear the first act of Rigoletto. <laughs> That day became known as the Day of the Magazines, and boys who had been present on the Day of the Magazines, and even some who hadn't been present, would keep asking Sal, Sal, when are we going to see sunshine and health again? And Sal would smile, that shy little smile of his, and say, fellas, I have no idea what you're talking about. Sal Romano, here's to you.